Hello, everyone, and welcome to Agribusiness Media Weekly Webinars on the Business of Farming. My name is Rollins, your moderator for today's session. We are excited to have you join us, farmers, as we discuss the business of uh, pig production. This webinar is brought to you by our trusted partners, 5Vet, Minerva Risk Advisors, and the Pig Industry Board. So we will cover from uh, A to Z, uh, including the breed selection, uh, nutrition, feeding, health, housing, uh, economics of production, and more. We are live on the Agribusiness Media Facebook page, so feel free to engage with us there as well. Today, we do have a fantastic lineup of uh, experts in the industry joining us. We have uh, Ishe Unnesu from 5 Vet, uh, Mr. Kaendesa from the Peak Industry Board, and we also have John Chirindo uh, from Minerva Risk Advisors. And after all the presentations, uh, this is how the webinar is going to, uh, fall, to unfold. We will then have a question and answer session where you farmers can interact with our, uh, present, uh, our presenters. And that is after all uh, the presentations. Without further ado, uh, let's dive in into our first presentation from uh, Ishe Unesu, and he is the technical advisor for FiveVet, and uh, he will be sharing his insights on pig production uh, and covering uh, nutrition as well as uh, feeding. Uh, over to you, Ishe. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ishe Unesu Nemera, a technical assistant at FiveVet Animal Health. So today I am uh, going to take you through uh, pig nutrition, mainly pig nutrition, where we cover feeding, uh, feeding management uh, to get profit. Uh, the main aim is to have a profitable uh, pig production. Right, so on the screen, uh, five key areas in pig production. So the first one will be pig health. The second one is genetics, nutrition, housing, and management. So with these five, uh, if they are done correctly, they will lead us to a profitable uh, pig production. Five. So on the health side, I'll just cover a little bit of it uh, and more on the question and answers. On the health side, uh, we have preventative ways uh, to, 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 to have our a perfect animal health status. The first one on the preventative is vaccination. We have to ensure that our pigs are vaccinated well. Uh, the second one, cleaning and disinfection. On cleaning and disinfection basically is to cut, to cut the, 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 the life cycle of, uh, of uh, disease-causing organisms. Then hygiene, when we talk about uh, uh, feeding on clean, uh, on clean feeding troughs and water troughs, then supplements. Supplements, we only talk about something like uh, uh, iron injections, ETC, those are the supplements. So with these preventative measures, you have to know always that prevention is better than cure. Uh, in this case, I can say prevention is cheaper than cure. Right. Uh, on, on treatment, uh, that's where we have your antibiotics, your penicillins, your extracyclines. Uh, so mainly on treatments, that's where you notice poor growth rates mortality, and mortality, which will be a loss. So whenever we are treating something, we have to know that there's a chance that you can treat or you may not be able to treat. So prevention is always better than cure. Right, then I go to, to vaccination guide. Uh, this is basically a, a basic pig vaccination guide. So we can talk about it uh, uh, later on the question and answers. Let me jump into nutrition, which is the main topic of today. Right, pig nutrition, good feed, Good feed is necessary for growth, body maintenance, and production of meat and milk. You can use locally available feeds that are less expensive. 
Bear in mind that feed constitutes 50 to 70% of your total production cost. So feed is very, very crucial when it comes to pig production. Use a good commercial brand name feed. By this, we mean commercial uh, brand name feed, just like five, okay? Then follow a phase feeding program for different age groups and different phases of production. So I'll dwell more on the phase feeding program because it's the most important part of pig production. Right, phase feeding. As you can see on the screen, there's firstly, there's the piglets being born. Then there's a, on the growing phase and then on the finish phase. So the phase feeding now, basically phase feeding uh, is a term which is used to describe feeding of several diet species and per stage of uh, animal's growth. Each diet is fed for a relatively short period of time within the feeding program to meet animal's nutrient uh, requirements at a specific age and phase of production. By this, I mean, nutrition even in Iran, you find that so that is a phase. So there's a phase of being a baby and a phase of being a toddler and a phase of being a teenager and a phase of being an adult. So the nutritional requirements of these phases differ. So if a piglet is on the first stage here, it means its nutritional requirements probably be milk and some sort of crypt feeding ATC. Then when it goes to a winner, it's a phase again which requires winner feeding. Then it goes to a grower. So phase feeding is when we feed several diets at different uh, stage of production. Right. So importance of phase feeding to ensure that animal specific nutrient requirements are met at each certain age and stage of production. So when a piglet is just being born, it needs colostrum, it needs milk. So we have to make sure that we provide that. Then when it, it grows, it needs creep meal, creep feeding. We have to make sure that we provide creep feeding, not grow our feed, not finish our feed, not lactating feed to a piglet. So a pre-wind piglet nutri nutrient requirement is very different to the nutrient requirements of a grower. So if one feed, e.g. winner feed or a grower feed is fed to a piglet, all the way through to a grower stage. This pig will not grow to the best that it can. No five, six, seven months, it has no better than even 45 or 50 pages for the month. It's because even their feed or feed is wrong from the day one up to the end, right? So the younger, the pig, the, the denser, uh, the diet needs to be. So when a piglet, when you are giving it creep meal, it's more nutrient dense than a grower meal. So these phases will change the nutrient density as the pigs grow. So what are the benefits of phase feeding? Number one is improved feed conversion. By feed conversion, I mean converting the feed that we give to the animal to body mass. Remember, we are resting against time. We want our pigs to grow. Uh, faster so that we get to the market quicker. So the moment we have a good feed conversion ratio, it means our animals will grow to their uh, maximal uh, genetic potential. Then better growth performance, that is body decomposition, reach to market weight earlier. Remember, if you keep your pig a month more, it means you to eat more feed, right? So we want them to get to the market earlier so that you can realize your profit. Then, and the finally, phase feeding will help you to, like to give you improved profit in the pig production uh, business. So we go now to good feeding management practices. Now we want to, yes, we have given all the phases, we have given cream, we have given winners, grower, etc. Now there's a thing which is called feeding management. So what is feeding management basically? It's managing the feed in a way that the animal will utilize that feed to benefit uh, on body weight, 
on uh, reproduction, on birth weight, etc. But number one nutrient to be managed is water. Water is often a forgotten nutrient in diet. But without water, we will not achieve anything that we need to achieve. So water is a key nutrient in pig production. So there's water quality, quantity, availability. So we have to take cognizance of water. Then number two, managing face feeding needs more organization. The farmer has to be organized. However, performance and economical results are worth it. It requires a lot of organization, a lot of work to be done, but the results are worth it. If you do your first feeding correctly, you realize the profit, you save the money and, to, and get the same amount of profit. So when changing from one feed to the other, it is important that it's done gradually. A transition over three days should be done. So let's say you are feeding Guru Ezako from a piglet to a winner. You have to make sure that you don't stop trip you today and start winning tomorrow. You damage your, uh, your, 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 like you, you trigger a uh, scour in a piglet. So you have to do it gradually. You have to introduce the new feed slowly by mixing it with the old feed over three days until you turn to the next phase of feeding. Then feed should be kept dry unless you are doing wet feeding. But when you are doing wet feeding, avoid buildup of mycotoxins. Avoid the The moment we do that, then uh, we are facing on the we are facing on the failure side. So you have to clean feed. You have to give clean feed. You have to clean feed and water source all the time. You have to make sure that you clean feed and water source all the time. Then number five is to encourage feed intake, which is the batch calf. You have to give them stuff in a way you know encourage a feed intake, right? You have to give it feed in a way that encourages feed intake. For example, challenge feeding, where you are supposed to be giving your animals, let's say, 20 kgs of feed, but then you break it into 5 kgs, 5 kgs, 5 kgs, so that you put fresh feed and then they will go and eat. So these piglets, they want to eat at the same time. So for one type of feed, or to introduce weight feeding, to encourage more feed intake. So all these things are time consuming. They want you to be organized, but they have the result, right? Right. So the first, when a piglet is born, the first nutrient during trip uh, period, or during tripping, or during uh, uh, lactating a phase is milk. You have to make sure that your piglet will get enough milk. And you have to make sure that you consider the number of teeth on a cell, and then you help the piglet to find a teeth of its own so that they can all have enough milk. So this will help you get a good uniformity, a good growth rate, uh, immunity against diseases. So it's important to make sure that you, your piglets will all have uh, enough milk. Right? Then, on creep feeding. Creep feeding, creep feed intake prior to weaning is a good indicator for lifetime performance. <clears throat> so you have to make sure that you create a good environment for the piglets. So in a commercial setup, they use the slated floors. On other setups, small scale setup, you can see uh, these brown nice piglets on dry bedding, and they look very, very comfortable. Right? So that's good environment for the piglets. Then health. You have to make sure that your piglets are healthy. You have to make sure that you try and use a product to, 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 to cater for like your iron injection. You have to do it by day three. Uh, you have to make sure that you do your, <coughs> your, your prevention against scours at day three. You have to make sure that you dip your then feed from as early as possible. 
when you are feeding creep meal, the reason why we put in creep feeding is because we want these piglets to get used to the solid feed other than milk. So try and introduce that creep feeding from as early as possible. Then in very small portions in the beginning. So you can put a handful of creep feeding in a pen like this with 10, 12, 15 piglets. They eat it. After eating it, you see the rate of consumption, then you increase gradually. So this requires a lot of time and attention into the farrowing house so that you can achieve good results. Like uh, feed two times a day, if possible. Uh, so when you feed your sow or the moment you feed your lactating sow, then you feed your piglets. It will encourage them uh, uh, to eat more feed. Location of the feeder near the south head. So we encourage that you put your creep feeding plate close to the mother's head so that when the mother is eating, it will encourage these piglets to eat as well. Then to feed a specially designed creep feed, which is palatable. So creep me we have, you know, for organic good particle size, it's in new area. In a sense, it's not your staff to be with our channel from a piglet head. Right. Then what's the target uh, feed intake? We have to feed something like 400 grams per, per piglet as it's pre-winning. Uh, then continue uh, creep feeding five days post winning and change gradually to winner. As I mentioned before, the issue of feed management on changing feed from one phase to another, you have to do it gradually. Right. Then you go to winning stage. A winning is equal to stress. So the winning stage is very, very stressful to the piglet. So winning is separating the mother and the piglet. So it involves changing the pen, changing the feed, no more milk, etc. So feed change. Too much in the calf will lead to low feed intake. Will lead to digestive disorder. So this one will slow down your growth and will cause an even growth if you don't manage it very well. So try as much to keep safe environment in the creep area that is dry with bedding and heat. So in this case, we are saying during creep feeding or when the piglets were, were with its mother, they were having enough warmth from those guitars, lamps, etc. But when you wean them off, the only thing that you must remove is the milk. But you have to make sure that you keep everything else constant. You have to provide that heating because you don't need to introduce your piglets uh, uh, harshly to the uh, outside environment. So they will have that stress, double or triple the stress. Then dry feeding, wet feeding. Feed them dry or wet feed, but be uh, on the watch of your mycotoxin, on the watch of your mold. Then water availability. If you are using a uh, nipple, like on the picture, you have to make sure that water is always available. You have to make sure that you check the nipple flow rate, something like two liters per minute. You have to make sure that the water temperature is low. Remember when you are using nipple drinkers, you put a bulk tank outside, you know, one certain channels were to the extent that the temperature and were in a change. It was a pinda munipu yako pisa. So this carriage water intake and good with that. So that's also just capture alarm. So remember, water is the key nutrient. So can I go to the house? I wonder. Would you have a visit? Chaka wonder. No good watch that show machine. Chandra name for a yan. Right. Then when you are feeding in the water trough, I think I have a kira pasta. Make sure to see you. You replenish the water trough here and there because my piglet swing it to Chita, Mushita, China, and also an umbrella, China, and a Dinu umbrella. So you have to make sure that you replenish them here and again so that you keep the water fresh and clean. So when you are using the nipple drinkers, you adopt to a, a rate of a 10 piglets per drinker. Then the water quality again is of importance, right? So winner phase, you can see that disgusting picture. Those are the scours. 
which are associated with the winning phase. So this is the worst picture that I've seen so far uh, of piglets having scars after winning. It's because of poor management of the winning, uh, of the, uh, the transition from a piglet to a winner. So you have to make sure that we try and prevent uh, those on the first pitch. But if you have a look on the other picture, piglets happy and in a, in a, in a bedding, and they all look okay, like the visual, uh, <laughs> the visual appraisal of the pig is fine. So th this is what we want to try and achieve, right? Then from the winner phase, we grow, we go on to the grower finisher phase. On to the grower finisher phase, the most important thing is to make sure that there is water and feed. Because phase E, in the Okuranguru, so can I to make sure that we pump them with feed and make sure they have water. These are those really two those are the most important parts, you know. And it's Kajita Shakanak, you have your pig to market quicker. Right, moving on to the to the other phase, which is a a, a, a lactating phase. It begins with water as a key nutrient for reproduction in animals. After giving birth, water requirement increases from about 20, now we are talking about the breeding farm, from about 25 liters to 45 liters per day. During farrowing, there's a lot of fluid uh, loss, and also a lactation will need a lot of fluid. Eh? Not all souls are able to drink such amounts of water by themselves because they are lazy. So you have to stimulate water intake. You have to stand it up, not to be kika gana over, but you stand it up gently a four times per day. This will help you again to monitor its health status when you wake it up four times a day. Extra water supplementation if any electricity cuts in case you are doing an automatic drinking system. Then ensure good quality drinking water. So the bowl of water, if you're using bowl of water or canto water, fine. But when you're using dam or river water, just make sure that you treat your water before it gets into the, uh, into the pan for drinking. Right, so now we go to face feeding. Now we want to talk about the actual figures. How many cages of feed are you going to feed an animal uh, per phase? Because if you want to do your budgeting, you have to know the, you get a 10 more piglets. How much feed, how much pig feed do I need? How much winner feed do I need? So this is the chance to have those figures down. So firstly, from four days old to 10 days post winning, that is around six weeks old. One piglet, we eat something like five kgs. And the target weight will be 7.5 kgs by day 28. Then we move on to the winner phase, which is from six to 10 weeks. We expect our, uh, our winner to be eating 25 kgs and we'll be targeting something like 29 to 34 kgs. This is a live weight kg. So how do you know that you're achieving these kgs? You definitely need to get a scale and make sure that you weigh your animals uh, on those uh, at 20 days at 10 weeks to see if you are uh, achieving those uh, target weight. Then you can win the weekly so that you can take your growth per week, right? Then for a grower from 10 to 15 weeks, you feed uh, something around 80 kgs of feed to achieve 64 to 74 kgs of life weight. Then from on the finisher phase, 15 to 22 weeks, 120 kgs to achieve a maximum of 100. 101 or above kgs of life weight kgs. Right, then we now want to go to the feeding of a breeding sap. So let's say we have wind, we have wind of our piglet. We want to ready over the tea feed it's okay by it within five to seven days. So how do we do it? On the day of winning, 
you will withdraw feeds. Now you go to 1 kg of lactating like, source feed, uh, 1 kg of profit. Uh, that's what we are doing. Uh, that's what we are doing. Is it not it to be tried with a dry off head? Then in the evening, you give two cages of saw and voltage. So now what about vacuola testing feed? They are now in saw and voltage. Then the following day, you use a product which you call profit. This is a, a, a reproductive a, a modifier. It will help your animal to come to heat or to give you a sound heat. You keep 250 grams of that plus maximum sow and bull feed, which is you can feed up to four to five stages. But this feed will be done for a period of uh, one to seven days while room around the way up. You want it to come on heat earlier. So you do this uh, throughout the period uh, up to the service period. Then, when you service your animal, we recommend that. From day one to day 55, you feed uh, 2.6 to 2.8 kg. Then from day 56 to day 85, you reduce your feed to around 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 kg, depending on the condition of the animal. Then from day 86 up to following Sanguruyano's R, you now increase that feed again to about uh, to a maximum of 3 kg per animal per day. Why are we doing this? So this feeding program is called medium, low, high. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to, we want to feed our animals, our animals depending on the nutritional requirements during the period of pregnancy. We do not want to feed a flat figure to say pregnant animals are being fed two kgs per day. We don't want that. We want to feed, so in terms of Baguno, save the Sanguru. Ukari is a feed ya go to two kg. You know, you just saw number of an eye chapter. So, what do you have to do? You have to do an eighteen. If you reduce feed, you know, cut our eyes to four. You know, cut our eyes to ten. Because you know, to not ah, feed and do two eyes, they do the concept of feed. So, this is a natural system which happens in the body, you not know, this all. Uh, uh, ma Masai wa ubifo adi aita chuma pigio. So you think it awanai wa vaka kwa tuatua ne vanawa kwa. Then, a second trimester pregnant. If I go to panel to come at development, eh, heart, liver, wara wara, so small little things in a body. So my requirements in guru ane gare bit low. Ine sura zaya gara gara isita se. But we know that they are pregnant for sure and we lower the feed. Then, after the trimester, we increase even up to, to 2 kg, 2.8 to 3 kg of feed, right? Why? Because that's where we want to build the best way to get And I'm not going to go to the next one, but I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. After the trimester, I'm going to build the weight. So now we want to build the best weight of our piglets. We didn't know that we are going to go to the next uh, an average of 1.5 kg. One of the other one is up to 1.5 kg. I want to tell you that 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 I want to tell you now, with the new genetics coming in Zimbabwe, you find that my requirements are happy to have it here because Kutu and Guru is not going to have four. So, bear in mind with two kgs in Guru per day, you know, you can have a productivity project because Guru is not a single wonder, a single wonder. You need to put two, point, two kgs. You have to adopt and move with the new uh, things which are coming in. Right. Then you go to far away. So we encourage you to feed and we do dry style and bone into some sign of that. We don't encourage you to move the lactation a week before we were Sahara or some days before. Because she never problems are as are associated with that. Right. So uh we are not Sahara. It is Sarangu. It's not two point five stages 
on the first day of lactating feed. We break it into two meals per day. Why do you do that? We need to start eating it now. Appetite. So the dog check in here. Put each get capture the one. Right. So, uh, what's the maximum feed intake from Guru Yasar? Maximum feed intake from Guru Yasar. You know, today my name is Inevana Wanga. So, can I Inevana? Let's say Guru Yasar Pawana ten. She may be allowing here half a kg for every man hour here to be a minister. She can't be in no jail. Wanna amal? Are we a minister? So, can I Inevana Pawana ten? Half a kg times ten is five kg. Plus 2.5 kg diet the body maintenance. So we never have to change. We need to take 7.5 kg. That's the maximum feed intake. I tell you that. We should handle more. So on the first day you give 2.5 kg. Second day 3 kg. You increase gradually by half a kg until you reach the maximum feed intake. That is 7.5 kg. Giving an example of 10 piglets. So if it's 12 piglets. We go to 9.5 kg, but we have to do it gradually, right? So giving this lactating so so much feed is to make sure that our piglets will get enough milk so that they can eat that 7.5 kg of uh, that 7.5 kg target weight at winning. So if the cow is producing enough milk, our piglets will grow fast, and then at the same time, the cow's body condition will remain will remain in a range which will allow it to come back on it by five to seven days. So the moment you don't feed it well, it will go very, very thin. You know, wonder to myself. You wonder, Guru, you know, look up a heat later than what you expect, right? Plus, you know, I eat a wonder. You know, because of the cassette of Guru, I wonder. You know, because of the time, difficult to eat. Right. So, What, so what does private offer in as far as nutrition is concerned? Private offers complete feed, which is your crib meal, winner meal, grower meal, finisher meal, lactating meal, sour and bone meal. For those who just want to buy their feed, open their bags and feed their animals, we offer you that. Then number two, we offer concentrate. May I want to remind you about the travel, grain, it's an affordable price. We'll give you a concentrate where you just go and you crush your concentrate. Your, I mean, you crush your maize, then you mix with your concentrate for five days. So on the concentrate range, we have fig grow finisher concentrate and sour and bone concentrate. The rest we have the meal. So with the concentrate now, the most important thing is to use quality maize. Don't use my fresh. Uh, my place, I mean, is no many of the guys are not as a roller music. I can have to come on the guys, still think as a guy of us. Don't use those because they don't have the nutrients that you want. So, if you want to get your pigs to market quicker, you have to get quality names. Right. Then, option number three is a base mix. Some call it a pre mix, but we call it a base mix. So, a base mix is a pig, single origin 20 kg pig, 16 kg pig. Then Kakupa base mix, we also give you the mixing ratio so that you go and do your own farm feed mixing. So by the base mix now, you need your, if you have access to brand, wheat or maize brand, access to maize, then access to soya milk. By that, you go then go on farm and mix your own feed. So all these three options are at five age. So the moment you get your Business, let's say one thing business, I'm going to pick grower business. Every five and so person will print you a copy on how to mix the ingredients. Then, uh, if you want to ask anything, those people are knowledgeable enough to, to give you the, 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 the mixing instructions. Right? So, these are the three options that we have on pig nutrition. So my best mix to a full range from crib, winner, grower, finisher, lactating and so and uh, lactating so and sour and best mix.
we, we have all of the full range in stock. However, when you are mixing your pollen rate or your basement on farm, uh, you have to ensure that you mix it on a flat surface. You have to ensure that your raw materials are mixed properly. So, a financial time, someone would have mixed it faster than the machine. You can see that guy is mixing it on a concentrate using a shovel and or by certain racket party, they don't have a mix. So, you can do it on a floor or on something like that on the screen. So, you can see that this is smart. Uh, this will we hope you to mix your all your ingredients even so that you can achieve your weight because the mixers are not even going to just say it's a matrix you may say it's a soya egg you may say it's a pre-mix egg so that's a good matrix right so what's the take home message <clears throat> the success of a good face feeding program is hinged on good management practices and the good health of animals it may look like a pain to use different phases, but surely it makes a saving while it's getting the feed to the market quicker. Feed costs make up to 70% of your total cost. So when deciding on what feed to use, make sure that a high quality feed is used, which will lead to high performance levels in both production and reproduction phases, resulting in more profit. I thank you. All right, thanks, Ishe Anesu, Ishe Unesu, for the informative uh, presentation. Uh, we really appreciate, uh, and you covered key issues there uh, on nutrition as well as uh, health and disease management. Uh, thank you so much. If you do have questions for Ishe Unesu, please do use the chat room here on Zoom as soon as we open it, or you can uh, use the comment section if you are watching us live on the Agribusiness Media Facebook page. And now, uh, for those new farmers wondering where to start, uh, we have Mr. Kaindesa from the Peak Industry Board. Uh, she is here to guide you uh, through the breeds, the breed selection, housing, keys to success, as well as the economics, uh, economics of production. Uh, Mr. Kaindesa, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. There you are. Yes, uh, basically, um, peak production is a game of numbers and efficiency is key. And it is critical to get the basics right from the first instance. What do I mean by getting the basics right? It's like when one is starting piggery, there is need for proper planning because uh, this will avoid uh, one making costly errors as you go. Uh, secondly, uh, basics, uh, in most cases, don't take uh, lots of money to correct, but errors will definitely do. So we always give emphasis on uh, getting the basics right. When I say pig pro production is a game of numbers, it's like um, if we say sow productivity, sow, which is the breeding female, sow productivity is is determined by the number of pigs sold from the one breeding female per year. Uh, we have cases whereby farmers are into pig production and they will be marketing about five, six pigs from one breeding female. We have uh, those who market about 10, 18, 20, 24, and uh, if I can quote the Netherlands, they are now even reaching around 30 per one breeding female. So it's how efficient one is in production to ensure that at the end of the day, there is productivity. Because in some instances, uh, you will be meeting fixed costs, like maintaining the head, whether you are able to sell six pigs or 10 pigs and so on. Uh, normally, uh, some of the costs you meet during the production cycle will basically be the same. Like for an example, uh, feeding the sow when it's pregnant, you won't be knowing how many piglets it's carrying and so on, but the basic feed you require is the same uh, during gestation. Where you can scale up or down is when the sow is lactating. So 
you need to ensure that the feed you are give, giving is, is really uh, going to be uh, made uh, good use of. Maybe kindly move the screen. So this is just uh, my introduction. And when I say it's a game of numbers, uh, I mean, um, you, sorry, basic, getting the basics right. Uh, I mean, there are basics like uh, on the feeds and feeding, on biosecurity, uh, hygiene issues, and so on. Uh, the environment the pig will be exposed to, it has to be the right environment. Uh, you don't, uh, you don't get uh, good production if you are exposing the animal to the wrong environment. So you really need to concentrate on the basics first. So if one is starting a piggery, uh, just uh, outlining uh, what you need to know. Uh, firstly, there is uh, some capital outlay. You need to plan, you need to budget, you need to know how much money you have so that uh, you won't make costly errors is already highlighted. We have cases whereby farmers come for advice when they have already started constructing the size and uh, they will be thinking that uh, if I set up a large enterprise, uh, then I'll just buy the pigs and so on. It won't be much money. But after sitting them uh, with them down and trying to relate uh, how the, uh, the project should be run, uh, they will know that uh, most money they have invested in, uh, in housing, uh, they won't be able to, to buy the uh, number of uh, breeding pigs they were thinking of. And that's already an error because what it means is some of the housing will just be left uh, idle instead of one having started with a smaller unit and uh, planning to expand. So capital is needed for housing. Capital is also needed for purchasing breeding stock, uh, feed and drugs. Uh, uh, production model and scale of production determines the amount of capital outlay. Like say uh, you have uh, some amount of money you'd need for the project, you can get in touch with Pig Industry Board, you'll be assisted as to uh, what size of a unit you can run with such monies and uh, you can adjust upwards or downwards. And uh, knowledge is, um, is very critical. One has to know uh, what they will be doing in, uh, in terms of housing, uh, their housing plans, which are held from the pig industry board to help farmers to decide on what the actual housing they would want to, to set up. And also breeds uh, of pigs. One has to understand uh, what it takes uh, for, I mean, the different breeds uh, which are available, their pros and cons, uh, if they are suitable for the environment, one will be uh, raising the pigs in and so on. Then uh, there is also need to understand uh, skills uh, on pig production because uh, pig production is a science and uh, an art. There are some technical skills one needs to have and uh, to that also pig industry board assist farmers in uh, uh, carry out uh, training programs for farmers uh, on the stations and also some outreach programs. So uh, on housing, head size uh, determines the number of pens one is to construct and also the type of pens that uh, will be required. And uh, on breeding stock, uh, it's advisable to get quality stock. Of course, it might be, uh, farmers might think uh, it's uh, expensive, but in the end, you find that it's not just the live animal that will be sold, but actually the genetics of the animal that will be sold. Then uh, feed uh, basically takes about uh, 80 85% 80, of the total production costs, and uh, one has to be very efficient uh, on the quality of feed one will be using. And the quantities, I think five it is highlighted on that already because uh, most uh, projects uh, that fold up, it's not a question of uh, maybe the, the breeds or what, but it's uh, on this uh, managing uh, the feed, how you prepare it, and also avoiding wastages. 
that's very important. Then uh, water is also a very essential nutrient. Uh, and um, besides uh, being a nutrient, uh, also for biosecurity reasons, cleaning your styes, reducing incidences of diseases, uh, you can you really need uh, ample water. Then uh, on the market outlets, uh, there are a number of abattoirs across the country. In um, I think currently active uh, abattoirs uh, around uh, 31, in, uh, which are of different sizes. We have grade A abattoirs, we have grade B, we have grade C abattoirs. Uh, these are just on the numbers uh, uh, that can be slaughtered, number of pigs that can be slaughtered at a time. Um, so, yeah, we, we, you really need all, all this information as you are planning to enter into pig production. Next slide, please. Okay, like I have already highlighted, uh, it's critical improving productivity and uh, farmers and stockmen should be trained uh, to that effect. Big industry board run uh, courses uh, for, for farmers, for stockmen, uh, whether one is already into production or is uh, about to start uh, going into production. We always give uh, emphasis on, on training. Uh, and uh, currently what we are seeing is, um, is uh, long back uh, farmers, uh, used to sort of uh, shun uh, ca to come for training in pig production. But like now, there are lots of uh, owners of the projects who are actually coming to attend because uh, it doesn't really make sense to be led by, by your, your employee. It's also important for you, the owner, to have uh, the right information because um, an employee can even lie to you or can even uh, steal from you because you don't know anything on the ground. And uh, that will be uh, a, a recipe to, 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 to uh, fail sustaining your project. So at least if the farmer also has hands-on experience, uh, then you can be at the same level with your, your worker. And uh, we see such projects being sustainable. And uh, besides just the knowledge, there is need to have uh, uh, the right attitude in uh, running piggeries. You need to have uh, the love for the animal uh, because uh, if you treat the animal wrongly, it will also give you uh, poor results. So again, that's uh, something which is also critical. Next slide, please. Right. Uh, on housing, as I have already alluded to, uh, the type of housing, the number of pens, it depends on the head size. Say uh, one is starting with a, a five cell unit because scale of production, we normally use the number of breeding females on the ground at a time. So if one has a five cell unit, uh, there is a basic plan which we recommend whereby one will just be building same um, number of pens with the same design, but uh, used for different purposes. So with that, you'll be needing about nine compartments, which are almost 10 square meters each. Uh, so with that knowledge, you can build the right pen. You can be, the, the pens need to have a, a slight slope so that uh, when you clean the pens, uh, water won't uh, stay in, in, in the pens and that will be a way to increase uh, uh, bacterial infections and so on. So you really need to have the right information. Siting is also critical. Uh, you need to, to cite where you are going to be putting your pens. And if you need any assistance, pig industry board uh, officers are also uh, able to assist or even um, the ministry, the agrotechs uh, department, is also able to assist. And uh, it's recommended that uh, pens should face north, south, and not east, west to avoid too much sunlight uh, getting into the pens and which will have sort of adverse effects on, on the pigs. The walls also need to be strong. Uh, we don't need uh, someone to construct a pen, uh, which when uh, 
exhaust with the, the pigs. The next day you start repairs and maintenance because that's also a cost uh, in production. So there is real need to ensure that uh, the pains um, the pains are, are the, the right uh, strength. And ventilation also is uh, critical uh, in the pens. Uh, you, these are particular heights, which is recommended for the pens and so on. And also the type of pen, if it's to house piglets, uh, the farrowing house, it needs to be warm enough and so on. Uh, so we have uh, sort of uh, what we call the specialized housing in basic pens. One can start with the basic pens if the unit size is not that big. And uh, if uh, you need to, to expand, then uh, you look at building specialized uh, housing like uh, the, the farrowing pen where the pig will be giving birth in or maternity if it's uh, uh, as humans. Uh, so it has some um, uh, special features and uh, you can build such a pen as, as you grow, because uh, at a time we'll be looking at about 25% uh, of your total pigs, uh, breeding pigs to be in the farrowing house at a time. Then also biosecurity is uh, critical. Uh, I think uh, Five it has spoken about it already. Uh, there is this uh, disease called uh, African swine fever. It's quite a dangerous disease, which is uh, no control, no vaccine, and it's best uh, uh, avoided uh, by ensuring the right biosecurity. So it's also recommended that when one is going into piggery, there's need to look at uh, fencing your, your, your piggery uh, using diamond meshwire and uh, also restricting uh, visitors in, in your units, especially if it's also some farmers coming from places where they have uh, pigs. And uh, animal welfare is uh, also critical. You need to ensure that uh, your animals are, are properly housed, they are properly fed and uh, looked after. And besides also staff welfare is critical. The person who will be running the pig garden also uh, needs to, to be looked uh, after well so that uh, production uh, will be will be will be improved. Uh, uh, let's go to the next slide. So yeah, basically these are just some examples of uh, pig housing which uh, you can um, build. Like uh, on the picture is what we call the what we call a dry cell housing. When we say dry dry cell, it's a pig which will either be uh, in gestation uh, period, that is a pregnant period, or that uh, brief period when it's open uh, between weaning and the next service. Or maybe guilds you are uh, building up to become future females. Uh, guilt is a breeding female which is not uh, given birth. Uh, so on these pens, you need uh, pigs can stay in groups and you need uh, to have strong doors, you need uh, floors, uh, which are solid, or which can be semi-slated, and um, they will be uh, used for, I mean, they will need to be cleaned on a daily basis or even twice a day. Uh, but uh, you don't really need to overuse the uh, water in your styles. That's why we recommend that if you have built the right pen, it will be having uh, a section where it will be for danging and watering, and the other section will be for, for feeding and lying. Then uh, we also have um, uh, bow, bow, uh, bows to be housed in their own pens. Uh, bows are the breeding male pigs. They should not be housed uh, uh, together with the females because you need to check whether the female is now ready for the bow. There are some sounds, uh, signs which it shows. So the bow, should not be housed together with the female, but it should be close to the females because the uh, research has proven that sight, smell, sound, and conduct of the ball help to bring the females uh, quickly on heat. Uh, next slide. Then the farrowing house is where the, the, the female will give birth in. If you notice the design of the housing, 
is now different from the uh, the, the former uh, uh, housing. Uh, this one it's um, like built up to roof levels, and uh, even those openings they should be closed uh, at night when it's cold, because uh, there's need to create two microclimates uh, for the pigs to ensure a warm environment, and uh, also. A, the sow should uh, should be should be cool. So to try and ensure the two micro environments, uh, the piglets they have what we call creep area. Uh, I think it will be shown uh, shortly where you have uh, uh, a small uh, uh, area so that the piglets can uh, can group and by so doing they can warm each other and you can also put uh, some electric lamps or biogas. Uh, to 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 warm them, then uh, the sow is given a space of about six point the pen, uh, six point two square meters per pen, and uh, about twenty five percent of the sows will be in the firing place. So at a time, uh, here we'll be looking at someone winning at around uh, five weeks, uh, but winning can take place between uh, four and and five weeks. Let's move on. Right, uh, the firing crate, uh, the firing crate uh, are those uh, steel structures where the sow lies in. And uh, this uh, structure is uh, required to reduce incidences of uh, crashing because uh, that's one of the main causes of uh, mortality uh, during the early days, especially if the environment uh, is not good. It's like uh, when the sows are, are the piglets are feeling cold, they have a tendency to move close to the to the to the to the female, and uh, that can cause crashing if uh, the 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 sow is not restricted. So also we recommend that uh, farmers need to to put such a structure in the firing pens, and uh, the creep area uh, is uh, where the piglets, as I've already said, will lie and they warm each other like the bottom picture shows uh, the creep area and uh, that's uh, uh, some heating uh, either biogas or infrared lamps like what's done in, in chickens as well. Then um, required temperature like in the firing house it's about 28 to 32 degrees Celsius and uh, bedding also is something which is uh, critical in the firing house. You can have uh, wheat straw, or wood shavings, or even uh, in the form of grass. And that's actually a cost you also need to, to look at when you are planning your, 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 your picker. You need to put some bedding in the, in the, in the firing house, especially for, for the piglets to help uh, warm them up. Let's go on. Right, then uh, after about four or five weeks, uh, piglets are removed from their, their mothers or sows, a process we call uh, winning. Uh, then um, winners are susceptible to stress because uh, they would have been used to uh, a certain environment where, where they will be having their sow, they'll be getting milk and it's warmer environment compared to depends they will be moving to. And also they will be uh, mixed in, um, in, in groups. So uh, this, all these uh, issues uh, cause uh, stress to the piglets. And we find that if the stress factor is not well managed, it can lead to uh, uh, diarrhea and uh, even high mortality, uh, that is death uh, after weaning. So a warm environment is also uh, required and uh, the area uh, should be separated. That is the dunging area and also the feeding and lying area. So from this picture, I find that uh, uh, the, the, the lying area is again enclosed and you can even still use uh, infrared lamps to at least uh, uh, improve the warmth in the ideal temperature will now be around 22, 28 degrees Celsius, which will be lo lower than, than the, 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 the temperature required during 
during lactation. Can we move? Right. Uh, the pictures now show just what we term out people's pains. The, these are the ones which uh, we normally say, like uh, for one starting with a smaller unit, uh, five cells, three cells or so, there is no need to really build specialized housing because at the end of the day, you'll be underutilizing the pens. So you have uh, what we call multi papers where you are just building a number of pens with same design, but used for different purposes. And uh, the pens uh, can be used for fattening, in, like uh, say you are expanding in the future, you can still use these pens uh, is fattening pens. It's not that you are going to, to, to destroy them and start all over again. So yeah, that's uh, some of the recommendations which, which we give as uh, pharmacy advice. Right, so the plans for the housing I've been talking of are available from uh, Pig Industry Board um, and uh, farmers can actually call or come physically uh, for further advice. Uh, on pig breeds, uh, we have um, an ideal pig needs to be fatter, that is uh, potential to give birth to a large litter size. Then uh, should have good mothering ability. Uh, this will lead to a potential for it to win a large litter because as I have said that it's a game of numbers. Uh, you really need to ensure that uh, uh, at the end of uh, some, the year or so, you are also marketing more pigs. Then the pig needs to have fast growth and uh, good food conversion efficiency. Conversion efficiency, I think uh, it's like uh, the gain uh, to, I mean, to produce a kg of meat, how much feed the pig would have uh, consumed. And also carcass quality is uh, important because uh, consumers are choosy. You don't need to have a, a, a pig which has too much fat and uh, very little uh, meat. Uh, so this can also be a factor of uh, breeds. Let's go to the breeds. Uh, from the pictures, we have uh, large white breeds uh, and uh, basically known for fast growth, strong legs, and good uh, mothering abilities. Uh, and the pig are sustainable to 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 sunburn, like uh, maybe in in hot areas. Then we have the landres, again almost same qualities with the uh, with the uh, with the large white, but uh, it slightly has some weak legs. Uh, and, um, but it's an excellent uh, mother as well. Let's move on. Uh, the next is uh, a jurok, which is now a brown uh, pig. Uh, with droopy ears, strong legs, good meat quality. Uh, it is mostly used uh, for crossbreeding uh, programs. It's uh, a good pig, it's strong. And uh, this is an indigenous breed of which commercial producers, we don't uh, encourage them to use this breed uh, because uh, it is it produces low litter sizes and uh, also lots of fat, but um, it's, it's a hardy pig. So maybe for subsistence, it can be used. Then, uh, yeah, so basically those are the pigs uh, on hand. And um, now the next slide is on value addition. Uh, these are just outputs uh, from the piggery. Uh, there is a breed, you produce a breeding stock and slaughter stock, then slurry and solid manure and carcasses and cats, slurry, biogas farming, and you can also integrate with fish farming. Let's move on. Then on business models, uh, the, we have farrowing to finish, which is the most common model in Zimbabwe. Uh, farmers breed the pigs and raise the piglets through the winner, grower, and finishing stages. Then uh, we have winner production, uh, whereby one can maybe specialize in production of winners it's not very much practiced in Zimbabwe, but like currently uh, for those who want uh, to just uh, fit in winners, uh, depending on availability, this can, can be availed. Then fit in our production, it's uh, bought in winners for fattening, 
and uh, fattening period is around 12 to 14 weeks if marketing at 22 weeks. Let's go on. And this is an example of uh, cost of uh, producing uh, a pig up to, to market uh, of uh, 100 kgs. And uh, the feed one will be uh, looking at. You have creep, you have grower finisher, you have uh, sow. Uh, this is uh, the, I think, uh, five, it is already spoken uh, on the different types of feeds. So I won't be dealing with that much. But um, on the proportionate use, it's about creep feed. You are looking at uh, using about 4.1% in the complete, diet, uh, complete uh, quantity. Then grower finisher, you are looking at about 70.9% then the sow feed, you are looking at about 25%. So you find that most feed is uh, for the growing finishing stock. And uh, this price is uh, per ton uh, from a certain feed company of which there are quite a number. So producers can uh, uh, say, uh, purchase their feed from different companies depending on uh, how they see the feeds performing, proximity and so on because transport costs are also quite uh, is also quite some cost. Then uh, here it's like from this example, uh, for one using ready-made meals, that is the feed you just be opening the bag and feeding the animal, the total cost is coming to about $2.48 per kg. But like uh, what was being highlighted by, by Five Ed, you can also buy uh, concentrates whereby you mix with uh, energy source, mostly uh, maize uh, or now traditional grains, but on traditional grains, you need further advice as to how much and also uh, like red sorghum has some um, sort of tannins. So it might not be recommended like to feed in, in large quantities as well. So if you are going to be using uh, concentrates, you find that in mixing with maize, you find that this cost of $2.48 will be uh, reduced and it's further uh, reduced if you are going to be home mixing using some premixes. But what's critical is to ensure that we have the, the right knowledge. So uh, this is uh, also quite critical. Then uh, can, we, can we move to the next slide? Assumptions is like uh, on this uh, workout, 11 kgs of creek consumed per pig. That is the first feed uh, you will be giving your pig. 67 kgs of sow and bone meal consumed per pig marketed in Boshe included. Because the cost of uh, producing a, 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 a poker, uh, the, the feed consumed by the sow and the bow is like uh, included in the, in, the, in the cost, production cost for the poker because you are not going to be marketing the breeding stock. Then uh, feed consumed, the uh, grower finisher, uh, it's around 190 kgs, and uh, assuming about 18 pigs sold per sow per year, and uh, feed also around 85% of the total cost of production. Let's move on. Right, so lastly, PIB offers services uh, for research, advisory services, which can be on the farms, at least two farms, at Akshura Station and uh, Blawayo, then uh, also on the farm training. We have a traditional three-week course whereby uh, we farmers or stockmen come in for, for that period. And uh, currently we are uh, getting about 24, 23, 20 farmers coming at a time for three week course, they can actually uh, be on station or some of them prefer to be coming from their, from their homes. So like I said, uh, training is also critical. Then uh, we also supply breeding stock in the form of live animals and semen. Uh, we actually have some uh, grandparent stock whereby we tap semen from and uh, we supply it to farmers. Then we also provide marketing information and service slaughter facility. Then we also run some training on value addition, whereby it's a one day course. Uh, farmers can come in uh, or anyone interested uh, to train on value addition, 
uh, for making things like uh, sausages, bacon, polony, salami, and so on. Right. Next slide, please. Basically, I think that's it. And uh, that's our contact numbers. And uh, for further information or final details, you can get in touch uh, with the techni technical department on those numbers. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaindesa, for such an insight for uh, presentations. Uh, if you do have any questions for her, please do type in the chat room. It's now open. And uh, please do hang on, Mrs. Takaindesa, for the question and answer session after the next uh, presentation. As pig farmers, we know that not everything goes as planned, and we must be prepared for the unexpected. Mr. John Chirindo from Minerva Risk Advisors is here to help us understand how to recover in the event of a loss and what can go wrong in the business of pig production. Mr. Chirindo, please take it away. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so first of all, I just want to thank Agribiz, this media, and my fellow presenters uh, for, for the job that they've done. I think now everyone is aware of uh, the correct uh, things that need to be done when you're managing uh, your big uh, uh, production enterprise. I think uh, you can see from this slide that uh, pig production is exposed to a myriad of uh, risks and uh, awareness of those risks, planning as well as implementing measures to counter the risks can spell the difference between success or failure of your pig uh, enterprise. I think uh, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Tagaindesa emphasized the, the, the issue of, of knowledge, why it's so important that uh, before you venture into pit production, you are aware of the potential pitfalls and the correct way of, uh, of doing what you, you need to do. Right. So um, uh, I think uh, just uh, the knowledge, first of all, the importance of this management is that it reduces the variance of the expected financial returns, uh, given the uncertainties encountered in a, a stochastic or random production and demand environment, it prevents financial loss or personal injury to workers or third parties uh, that may occur. And also proactive management of risks avoid major surprises or mistakes and ensures that upside business opportunities are identified uh, as well as optimized. Uh, we will, for example, you can maximize on your income if you, you release on the market uh, uh, your, your pork at a time when there is uh, very little supply on the market and the prices are high. Uh, so those are some of the upside business opportunities that we okay. And especially now where demand for pork is very high, uh, we are venturing into pig production can uh, uh, really boost your, your income streams. Right. Uh, so my presentation will basically outline the following uh, risk information, what it is, uh, the, the industry that we are talking about, the risk in, risks in pig production, uh, risk management, uh, insurance, uh, and premium rates. And I will try as much as possible to be very brief uh, in the interest of time. So in terms of the risk information, I think uh, Zimbabwe is one of the top producers of pork and pork products. I think in the last article that I, I read, I came across, uh, we were now around number uh, 98 as of uh, 2021, right? And the now uh, national sow head is estimated to be around 60,351. Those are 2021 20, figures, and uh, about 20,351 is in the commercial pig production sector. Overall pork production, both formal and informal, increased by about 25% from 14,347 metric tons in 2020 to around 17,973 metric tons against a national target of 22,000 uh, by 2025, which roughly is around uh, at current prices of pork producer prices should be around 110 million being contributed to our national GDP. Pig slaughter at abattoirs increased by 21% from 178,668 
pigs in 2020 to around 216,403 pigs in 2021. So you can see that this is uh, quite a, an important uh, enterprise uh, and uh, it is, uh, I think, incumbent upon uh, all stakeholders to see how uh, we can uh, boost it, uh, boost this. And I think if we utilize even the, the idle capacity amongst the farms, uh, we, so we have seen some infrastructure that is not being utilized as well as the excess capacity or idle capacity in our manufacturing plants, uh, we should be able to, to further boost uh, these figures and maybe even end up in the, in the top 50 or so. So what are the risks in pig production? Well, they can be environmental risks, like uh, earthquakes, explosion, lightning, hail and windstorm. Uh, which can maybe blow away the roots of your uh, pig units and expose uh, your animals to unfavorable weather, flooding, uh, drought, which can cause shortage in maybe the grains which are used as feed ingredients, and we end up with uh, having to scale down uh, our, our stock because of uh, the, you know, the, the price of feed going up as a result of drought. Uh, there are also issues of predators, uh, Vicious damage, uncontrollable pests and diseases. There was reference to African uh, swine fever, which is caused by a virus and which is uh, impossible to treat. Uh, there is also theft and other transit risks that uh, the enterprise can be exposed to. And how we can mitigate some of these production risks, uh, maybe use of late, latest technologies. Uh, uh, the previous uh, presenter, Mr. Ushewunesu, talked about uh, uh, the uh, phase feeding uh, that uh, has to be practiced, when to service your sows. And I also, Mr. Kendes, I emphasize the issue of, uh, of feeding and the importance of uh, feeding the correct um, feed uh, to the to your to your sows or focus or your, your piglets and uh, also maintaining adequate reserves of inputs including uh, your maybe your treatment uh, chemicals or medicines as well as your vaccines and not, of course not forgetting the feed. So some of the risk management strategies that can be employed on the farm uh, include providing good nutrition to the animals, uh, avoiding overcrowding. Mr. Kendes mentioned uh, the, the ideal sizes of pens, uh, proper pen design, including the location also very important uh, to avoid uh, leg problems or maybe even sandbag. Uh, if you maybe orient your, your your, uh, your pains uh, east to west. Wet floors help in the proliferation of bacteria that was mentioned, the isolation of sick animals uh, in sick bays, and uh, those sick bays should be the last to be cleaned, and equipment from in those sick bays also should be the last to be cleaned. Uh, control prevention of diseases such as mastitis, metritis, galactia, uh, mange. Uh, various abscesses, anemia, arthritis, foot and mouth, African swine fever, uh, anthrax, uh, hemorrhagic septicemia, rabies, and so on. And vaccination will help to prevent uh, your animals from contracting most of these diseases. Biosecurity has also been emphasized, emphasized the need to keep infectious agents or pathogens out of the pig unique and this can be done through strict adherence to biosecurity measures, including your footpath uh, at the entrance of every pen and even entrance to, to the facility, you can have the wheel, uh, wheel path for, for any vehicles entering. Uh, the boundary fence to keep other animals away, uh, proper isolation distance, uh, quarantining new animals and limiting animal movement. Close attention should be paid uh, to the emergence or, or, or signs of disease within the pig unit. 
and uh, dead pigs to be burned or buried to prevent the spread of disease. Hygiene helps to prevent outbreak of diseases through clean, thorough cleaning of pens, helps to reduce the bacteria on the site. And uh, also, preferably, needles and syringes that are used to treat sick animals should be disposed, and uh, if they are reusable, they should be sterilized. Right, so that's about the production risks. Then we come to marketing risks. Uh, this involves prices of uh, your commodities, prices of your inputs or cost of your inputs, and the price of farm products affected by supply and demand, as we all know. Um, and the cost of production. So the supply of the product is affected by a combination of uh, production decisions made by the farmers as a group and by weather or other environmental factors which may influence uh, the output. We mentioned the drought as being one of them. Demand for a product is also affected by consumer preference, consumer's level of income, the strength of the general economy, and the supply and price of competing products. Uh, well, of course, pig would uh, be competing with poultry and beef. So the price of these other commodities will also influence demand uh, for pork. Cost of production of a unit of product, of product depends on both the input costs and the yield. We are all aware that uh, as uh, you yield more, the co relative cost per unit produced uh, becomes smaller and smaller as your yield increases. How can you mitigate some of these marketing risks? You can either spread sales. We talked about, uh, you know, timing your, well, your output uh, at a time when it is uh, less on the market. Uh, direct marketing to consumers as opposed to marketing to, to an abattoir. Uh, contract arrangements with input suppliers uh, to fix in prices and, and also uh, your buyers. Uh, so that you, you get a, a favorable price at the end of the of the period and also building trust between the parties um, so that uh, the, the, at the end of the day the, the contract uh, is viable and uh, persists uh, over time or is more long term and also track it, it's tracking marketing market information so that you you know which markets are offering the price, best price and uh, when there is uh, oversupply or a glut in the market. We move on to financial risk. Financial risk occurs when money is borrowed to finance the farm business. And as uh, uncertainties uh, around that include maybe interest rates, interest rates, the lender's willingness or ability to continue to provide funds when needed, the ability of the farmer to gener generate the income necessary for loan repayment. Uh, and also we have the situation with small border farmers borrow money at high interest rates and uh, may face difficulty in paying the, the debts because of uh, maybe lower than expected prices, uh, lower yields, uh, which can make uh, debt repayment uh, difficult and may lead to the farmer closing down the farm. Some of the risk mitigation measures uh, around that would be to hold your liquid assets which can easily be disposed of to get cash. Uh, and also when you present your proposals to whoever is financing, you also budget in contingencies which may arise, uh, which are unforeseen, so that you don't uh, fall short of funds when you're at a critical period when you need the fund, not the funds. You can also manage financial risks by insurance, which will provide a reliable level of cash flow in the event that uh, an insured period affects your, your production enterprise. Insurance can offset harvest failure, complete failure of the of the unit as a result of an insured event or some 
uh, epidemic disease and uh, the farmer is able to 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 to, re to recover and start to start afresh if they have insurance we also have institutional risks Inst institutional risks refers to unpredict unpredictable changes in the provision of services from institutions which uh, support the farmer uh, for example banks uh, interest rates we mentioned that uh, cooperatives marketing organizations input dealers and government uh, extension services uncertainty of government policy which may affect farming such as uh, price support or subsidies or taxes may affect the, the viability of your key production unit how we may mitigate some of these institutional risks would be traditional societies which provide security against risk through strong community bonds where they exist in unions between farmers. Uh, this uh, group enterprise provides uh, confidence for more vulnerable group members. Uh, they learn from the bigger brothers who may, be, who, have, who may have more experience or have been in the enterprise for a longer period and uh, I would have been doing well. Economies of scale in service provision by being able to bargain uh, or to negotiate uh, with volumes, you are able to influence uh, your buyers or traders to provide favorable terms. Organization of farmers ensures economy of information collection as well as dissemination of information. Financial risks can also be mitigated by establishing cooperatives. Sorry, institutional risks can be mitigated by establishing cooperatives. Uh, we mentioned the economies of scale, in, or similar to the unions, economies of scale in bulk purchase of inputs, uh, savings in transactional costs uh, for the members by working as a group or mobilizing capital. Also, as a group, it becomes easier because you have the necessary volumes that may make the enterprise viable. Economies of scale for bulk marketing produce. Again, there are advantages associated with uh, negotiating for better prices together or transportation of more volume of, uh, or, or, of uh, pokers to, the, to more distant markets. Then we also have human and personal risks. Human risk refers to the risk to the farm business caused by illness or death and the personal situation of the farm family. Uh, accidents, illness, and death can disrupt farm performance where critical operations need to be carried out and uh, so the bulk of your labor, laborers or staff are ill, it can cause a serious dis disruption in the, in, in, in the enterprise. Uh, labor migration away from the farms has, has also been in recent years has also been a major challenge uh, seeing less and less uh, uh, laborers, laborers on, on farms uh, where they are there again the cost of, um, the, of, of, of labor tends to be high political and social unrest can also limit labor a little bit then we also have a spread of uh, HIV and AIDS uh, which has limited again the availability of labor as well as the productive productivity of labor in instances where uh, the staff members are ill. And uh, for certain diseases uh, which are uh, called uh, zoonotic diseases or diseases which are common to both humans as well as pigs, like influenza, for example, it's possible that humans can transmit diseases to uh the the peaks that's another risk that's why in some operations the workers are first of all screened before they are allowed to work uh in the pig unit i think mr kindness i mentioned the issue of uh having the correct skills or people with experience managing the pig unit Having the correct skills means that uh, productivity is increased and uh, also labor-related problems are avoided. 
Okay, so your risk management uh, focus entails going through the entire aspects of the of the operation with the with the intention of identifying whatever exposures exist uh, in the inter enterprise. Uh, you can uh, do this by means of maybe having a, a checklist. Um, so we're taking off uh, those uh, risks to which your, your, particular, your particular unit, depending on where it's located, and uh, maybe uh, uh, the, the, the exposures that are peculiar to, to, to that location, uh, it is, as well as uh, your, your skill set and um, uh, field, field availability and so on. You can uh, tick off uh, on a checklist that assesses uh, the, in order to assess the risk. Uh, you can use uh, financial st statements, especially cash flows, uh, to identify those uh, times in the year when there is uh, a high demand for, 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 for funds. Uh, you can uh, review your contracts, uh, see that there are no gaps uh, in the contract which may leave you exposed. Uh, you can also look at uh, the loss history of uh, your unit as well as uh, other units in the area to identify the causes of some of these losses and how you can, and then make a plan on how you can uh, prevent uh, those losses. You can also solicit uh, the services of uh, your insurance brokers or your contractors, uh, extension support uh, services to do a survey. And uh, their reports will help you identify some of the the exposures that uh, pertain, that exist on your on your enterprise. You will then, after identifying the, the risks, you analyze the exposures in terms of uh, severity, severity as well as frequency of occurrence. Uh, you categorize them. You examine feasible risk management techniques to employ, uh, which uh, can uh, include. Uh, things like uh, avoiding the risk altogether. For example, if you uh, you can decide whether you want to to fit in winners, or you want to, or whether you want to breed uh, the the winners yourselves and then fit in. Uh, if you decide that you know I'm not well skilled in producing or breeding and producing winners on the farm, you can then avoid the, the risk of uh, high mortalities of winners by buying in the winners uh, from another producer or the big industry board and then fit in. Uh, vaccination against disease is also is a way of avoiding um, your, uh, those diseases from, from causing losses on, on your pig unit. Then the next step would be selecting the appropriate risk management techniques of, from, from the list. Uh, that I will share with you just now. Then implementing that uh, uh, risk management technique and then monitoring the results and revising the risk management program uh, where necessary. Okay, this slide uh, more or less uh, speak to the, speaks to the same thing. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, you describe the business, uh, you list the risks sources that are that pertain to your 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 project uh you evaluate and rank them uh in terms of the resource you analyze the situation and then you employ the or implement the relevant strategy to count to mitigate that risk so these are the four risk management strategies you can either accept the risk uh for example, if you choose not to vaccinate because maybe a particular disease is not endemic to the area, you are accepting the risk and uh, you, you accept the possibility that if that risk occurs, you are going to suffer losses. You can control or mitigate the risk. I think uh, the previous presenter talked about timeliness of the various operations like feeding, um, mating or servicing your sows and so on. Uh, the, I think Mr. Kendesa mentioned the issue of a creep area where, where there is heat that is provided to warm your piglets and uh, prevent things like uh, hypothermia uh, causing death of the pig, piglets. So that's uh, controlling, mitigating the risk. You can also 
avoid the risk. Uh, I mentioned the issue of uh, uh, win, uh, sort of breeding and uh, producing winners on the farm, uh, as well as uh, maybe buying in if you cannot do that. That's a risk avoidance. Then risk transfer may be things like uh, locking your price uh, with uh, a futures contract where the price of uh, the focus is already set in the contract. And uh, even if the price is lower than that, when you eventually sell, uh, the contract binds the buyer to, to buy at those prices. Uh, you can also transfer for those risks that are very severe and uh, for which losses may be catastrophic to the operation, you can transfer those risks uh, to insurers uh, who will then pay you in the event that uh, those uh, risks uh, strike and uh, cause losses on the farm. Okay, uh, this is just uh, outlining maybe uh, the decision whether to, to accept or transfer for, sm for, for small uh, risks with uh, low frequency, you can accept uh, for small risks of high frequency, those you may, you may need to control, mitigate them. For large risks of low frequency, those definitely you have to transfer to insurers. And uh, again, large risks of high frequency, try to avoid them altogether. Okay, I'll just uh, quickly go over the aspect of insurance. Uh, because a lot of farmers have benefited where they have suffered losses from insurance. And I think it's important that uh, we are all aware of what insurance of pigs entails and the cost of that insurance. And there's a general rule all the animals of the farm uh, must be insured, especially those of the same group. If you have chosen to insure just your bulls, it's, it's allowed, you can do that. Uh, but then you are insuring all the bulls on the unit. If it's only sows, then again, all the sows uh, on the unit, or you can uh, insure all the animals. The premium rates that you will be charged will depend on a number of things. Uh, the historical losses in terms of the loss frequency or the potential for losses, the net or the loss rate, which is um, a function of uh, the total, the value of the total losses that have occurred uh, as a result of the of insurable events, and the total value of the pigs uh, that are uh, where those losses are occurred. So that is the loss rate or the net rate, which is also called the uh, risk rate. Then on top of that, uh, you have your loadings, uh, which can be loadings for, for, for expenses of administering the policy, uh, the loadings for a, a reserve, which will then be invested or accumulated uh, to then pay, be able to pay claims in the event that one of the insured farmers suffers uh, losses as a result of the insurable event. And uh, after those less uh, loadings, you then uh, get to the loss rate, which is around two to 4% of the sum insured on the unit. Uh, and is a function of uh, the, the loss experiences and uh, exposures, which I mentioned earlier. Your insurance will cover death or emergency slaughter due to accident uh, of your pigs, uh, electrocution or impact can be the accidents, death or emergency, emergency slaughter due to fire or explosion, lightning, storms, or diseases. Uh, losses due to proven theft. Your sum insured will be agreed up upfront before inception or its inception of the policy and should not exceed market value. It can be the purchase price of your pigs. Uh, if they are bulls, how much you bought them for from PIB or any other uh, supplier. Or it can be a decre declared value that has to be uh, agreed between yourselves, the farmer, as well as the, the insurer for those pedigree uh, animals which are of high value. Uh, the basis of indemnity or compensation will be uh, the agreed sum insured less any applicable deductibles, such as the excess uh, or savings and so on.
and uh, we normally ensure your pigs at the mature uh, mature weight or mature value. But losses may okay before the animals reach those mature weights, uh, and in which case there is a table that is used to adjust, uh, taking into account the age of the animal when the loss occurred and the value, uh, the corresponding value of the animal at the time of the loss. But uh, some of the things that you may need to know are that uh, for catastrophic uh, perils such as uh, uh, the African fine uh, fever, uh, they may be limited cover, uh, maybe up to maybe 50 or 60 percent of the value that may be insured. Uh, you need to vaccinate all animals against uh, the diseases equivalent in the area, and uh, the vaccination program has to be submitted to the insurer. The quality of feed is very important. The quality of breeding stock is also very important. These have to be sourced from a reputable supplier. Uh, you don't feed leftovers from the canteen uh, to your commercial uh, stock. You will also be required to provide monthly declarations of stock and uh, the indemnity tables will be shared and agreed again at inception of the policy. In the event that a loss occurs as a result of the insured perils, uh, the loss has to be reported to the insurer immediately. Mitigatory measures where they can be taken should be also uh, implemented to reduce the extent of the loss, uh, such as maybe isolating sick animals and treating them separate from the rest of the head and so on. The animal is the property of the insurer following a loss and then determines where and how it has to be disposed. Uh, in most cases, in fact, in all cases, the post mortem outlining the cause of death has to be provided. Then the loss quantum is computed in less. Uh, any salvage or applicable savings, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Most policies exclude certain uh, certain things or certain losses like uh, government slaughter, or slaughter orders, uh, slaughter without prior consent of insurance, except for the main reasons uh, following recommendation of a veterinary officer. Surgical operations which are not performed by a qualified veterinary, veterinarian may also be excluded. And fitness or incapacity for example, we, things like uh, inf infertility may not be covered. Where good husband practices, practices are not being followed, I think we are all now away following the presentations of the two previous speakers. What are good husband practices involved? Mysterious disappearance, consequential losses, and also willful negligence of the child or his agent. Those are excluded. Okay, I've come to the end of my presentations. Uh, thank you very much. I'll now wait to hear any question. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Dino, for the valuable information. Indeed, risk management is key to the success of our pig production uh, business. We've now reached the question and answer segment of our webinar. And please do keep your questions and comments coming via the chat box here on Zoom or in the comment section if you are watching us live on our Agribusiness Media Facebook page. The first question that I'll take here says, uh, how can we be assisted as farmers to market our pigs, uh, Mrs. Jakayendesa? I don't know if you can take that one. Right, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, on marketing of pigs, uh, it's critical to get the right information. Like I have highlighted, when your pigs are almost uh, reaching uh, market age, you can um, actually check uh, as to the current uh, going prices uh, so that one avoids to be shortchanged. And at the same time, uh, there are some uh, abattoirs uh, where you can actually uh, send your pigs to, depending uh, on the area, like uh, their abattoirs are uh, spread across the country, uh, depending on um, uh, which areas, like uh, in Marsh East, there are around six abattoirs. In Marsh West, there are also around six, seven abattoirs. In Mutare, there are two abattoirs and so on. So uh, if you need uh, that finer information as to the abattoir spread across the country, 
uh, we can actually share that with you. And uh, is it uh, uh, relates to the prices? You can actually get in touch with our um, our our abattoir and butchery manager because time and again is scanning on the prices. Then um, of uh, there is this uh, uh, ZAGP, which is Zimbabwe Agricultural Growth uh, uh, Promotion, which is uh, running with uh, trying to give farmers work in groups. It's also quite critical, like they've been working in two corridors, uh, marsh west and marsh east. And uh, there, there have been some uh, positive developments where farmers can actually market their pigs as a group to some large retail outlets. Like um, there is this uh, 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 butchery, Sare butchery in Bromley. It's, uh, uh, it, they can actually take uh, good quality pigs from uh, farmers around. So that uh, information on where I can market, it's like uh, if farmers really tell exact place where they are producing their pigs at, then that information can be shared. Yeah, there is Renam Abattoir where also they can uh, send their pigs in. So it's like uh, different uh, abattoirs in different places because uh, the law governs that pigs should be slaughtered uh, from registered abattoirs uh, so that you, you can actually enter uh, marketplaces without uh, challenges. All right, uh, thank you for taking that one. And whilst you are still there, Mr. Gendesa, another farmer says, I would like to know the price ranges for those intending to adopt artificial insemination of the cement for so, large white. How do you price so, your cement? Sorry, come again. Okay, uh, the farmer is asking about um, price range for, for artificial insemination. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, yes, uh, we have uh, an artificial insemination laboratory here at the Pig Industry Board. So we have uh, some grandparent boards which uh, we tape semen from, and the semen is uh, analyzed for quality, and also the cold chain uh, should be maintained. So on the pricing, it's like uh, on costing as to how much it costs us to, 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 to prepare that uh, cement. Uh, there are some sort of uh, fixed costs like maintaining the boil zone, all those costs are taken into consideration. Then there are also some um, costs as to the packaging and uh, the, there is uh, some chemicals which we use to sort of extend the shelf life for the cement, uh, which we actually import from the Netherlands. So all the costs are, are put in and uh, we value our semen or we provide our semen at $5 per dose. And when we say a dose is like the semen you would want to use to inseminate the pig once. And we recommend that our pigs should be inseminated twice. So when you are buying, you come in, you buy the two doses at $10. And then uh, you also get uh, two uh, catheters, which will be used, which we use to actually inseminate the pig. And uh, we need you to come with a, a cooler bag or a flask because uh, uh, semen is very sensitive to, 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 to temperature shocks and we don't want the temperatures to uh, fluctuate. And you only come in to buy the semen when the uh, pig has actually started showing signs of it. It's not like you are coming and buying and packaging it somewhere. It has to be used within uh, a short period of time, like I think shelf life of three, three days at most and so on. And you need to make the bookings in advance. And it's not just a question of coming in to buy the semen. Uh, the inseminator should have the knowledge as to how it's done. So again, during our trainings, uh, we also training farmers to, to do the insemination. All right. Then uh, another question from uh, NS here says, where is PIB located in Ulawayo? And do you do AI artificial insemination training courses? If so, how much? Okay. Um, in 
Lawayo is like a, a peak industry board is along uh, Lawayo Harare Road, about 15 k's from Lawayo, uh, just opposite uh, Fairbridge Park uh, Police Station. Uh, to your right, it will be the pig industry board. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't share the Blawayo station number, but I could uh, just uh, uh, shout it out for you, uh, for the manager in Blawayo. His number is uh, 0772 517 is called uh, Mr. Mbeure, and uh, the assistant manager is called Mr. Beta on 0778 So you can get in touch uh, with uh, uh, these uh, officers if you need any technical assistance or training. Then uh, on AI in Blawayo, we have not yet uh, set uh, a lab. It's something that is uh, on the cards. But uh, like say someone would want uh, semen in Blawayo, maybe a plan can be made to, to transport it overnight via Swift and so on. But like I am saying, it's quite critical on the, on the, on the, on the temperatures. So correct pa packaging has to, has to be done. So right. training uh, on AI still um, in Blawayo, yes, they can, but they will be like uh, sort of using uh, dummies. All right. Uh, thank you uh, for taking that one. Then this one is for Ishewunesu. It says, uh, thanks for the presentation, Ishewunesu. My question is, do you have a branch here in Bindura? Okay, uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have a branch in Pindula as yet. Uh, the only way to get our feed in Pindula is through our uh, different uh, agents, uh, which I may not mention by name because they'll be competing for some customers. But in the towns that we are not represented, we have uh, agents which we support in those towns. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Ishonesu. And uh, another question for you is, which is cheaper, buying concentrates or straight feed? Right, on our feeding, on our feeding options, one thing you have to know is uh, using a straight feed, a concentrated investment, the riskier it becomes, the cheaper it is, and the labor intense it becomes, the cheaper it is. So using concentrates is cheaper than uh, using straight feed. All right, uh, thanks for uh, taking that one, Ethan. Then um, this one is for John. It says, does Minerva cover in transit uh, risks, especially when transporting breeding stock uh, as it is expensive? Uh, thank you. Yes, most definitely. Uh, transit risks can be covered. Uh, any losses arising uh, during transit as a result of uh, road accidents or hijacking will be covered uh, as part of the standard cover that is availed, uh, which is the mortality cover. All right. Uh, thank you. Then, uh, as a startup farmer, which medication must I? always have on in hand uh, and which medication is needed for the project that is vaccination deworming etc i don't know if you can cover that now or they can uh, get your contact number and engage you later yeah i can share my contact number so what we do encourage our farmers is whenever you have an animal health a problem that's when you inject to treat it but Things like iron injection and disinfectants and vaccinations, those things have to be done uh, by the book. But when the disease comes, we don't know which disease will come, so you can't keep uh, a medicine uh, unless there's advice from a vet which says so much products have to be kept in a, in a box in case of 
challenges like A, B, C. So visit any, any five outlets or your local veterinary office for advice on the animal health of your pigs. All right. Uh, then uh, this farmer here says, thanks, Mr. Chilindo, for covering risk management. Uh, what's the minimum number of pigs that uh, one can ensure? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is no set minimum number as such. Uh, obviously, it will depend on the cost of administering the policy, depending maybe on where you are located uh, from the uh, the distance between yourselves or your farm from the insurer. Uh, if uh, the distance is uh, short, you are around Harare, I think uh, a, a viable unit in terms of uh, maybe the number of sows, uh, goes, uh, the, that you have, if as long as the enterprise is viable, it's a commercial enterprise, it is viable, then definitely you can uh, you can uh, insure it. What cannot be insured are subsistence uh, projects, uh, which are where you are keeping uh, your uh, these uh, animals for for home consumption. Maybe a few uh, winners you are threatening for home consumption. It's not a viable uh, commercial unit that cannot be insured, but any commercial enterprise can be insured. And I think we have heard the the, 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 the the numbers in terms of your bow to sow ratio from uh, uh, the previous uh, presenter. And uh, I think uh, the minimum uh, commercial unit uh, going upwards uh, can be insured, which would be uh, depending on the ratio of bows to sows that you can hear yeah, that you are using one to 10 or so one to, two, one to 20 or so on, uh, that, that can be insured. All right, uh, thanks, uh, John. Then this one is for Mrs. Takayande. It says, I'm interested in your uh, training itinerary. Could you please present one for the year for those in Harare? And um, if possible, you can attach the, the charges. I don't know if you have that uh, uh, on hand or maybe uh, they can call and engage you later. Yeah. Um... Unfortunately, on me, I don't, but uh, the technical number I have shared, they can share with you the training program. Like uh, the, the training programs are basically uh, three weeks, but it's flexible. Like some owners at times they say they don't have uh, time to be with us for three weeks. Uh, so they can come for five days, two weeks or so. And um, he, they can, uh, like uh, the last group uh, we were having have just completed today and we have an incoming group on Monday. So it's uh, the Monday after every three weeks. But if you get in touch with uh, that uh, number stated uh, technical department or the WhatsApp number, uh, it's uh, 738 uh, that's uh, the technical number for the WhatsApp. Uh, uh, that is the WhatsApp number for the technical officer. He can actually share with you the the, the training program uh, for the year. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kendesa, for taking uh, one. In fact, the year says, can I start keeping uh, raising kids from win uh, pigs from winners to the market? And um, maybe if you can share more information on that one, Mr. Kendes, on that model, how does it work? Okay. Uh, like I said, um, here in Zimbabwe, it's uh, not really pra practiced uh, to a large extent, but uh, you find that uh, countries like uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, and so on, they actually have farmers who specialize in producing winners. Then there are farmers who specialize in growing those winners. But uh, here it's like uh, mostly the availability of winners because most farmers prefer to just run a closed head like uh, from the farrowing up to marketing. But uh, like I was saying here at Pig Industry Board, uh, we also sell some winners to farmers because um, actually it's uh, easier just to, to fit in winners, like we do in Brailers, those day old chicks, just are growing them up to market. 
it's sort of the same concept. You are actually growing uh, the wind pigs, uh, which you get at about 18 kgs of weight, uh, and they will be around eight weeks with good growth. Then you just uh, feed them uh, the grower diet, the finisher diet up to market. Actually, like um, we recommend like uh, farmers uh, who are uh, starting uh, would want to go into pigs, but um, not sure of the breeding aspect because breeding, it takes a lot of uh, uh, effort and knowledge to actually ensure that this sow will give me 10 piglets, 12 piglets and so on. But for winners, it's just buying the numbers and uh, the risk of uh, death will be quite low uh, is the pigs who they pass the critical stages. So yes, you can uh, grow your pigs uh, that way. And like uh, our current um, our current price for the winners here at PID, uh, it's uh, 70, it should be $75, yes. So it's possible. It's a question of uh, a booking in advance and at the same time, uh, um, checking on our volumes uh, if we are able to supply the volume you would require. And uh, this model is being taken up by a number of uh, high schools whereby they are also venturing into pigs and so on. And uh, actually quite some, uh, quite a number. They are sort of purchasing the winners and just start growing the winners for, my, for their own uh, kitchens and at the same time, maybe selling the extras. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, then uh, another farmer here says, okay, it's Kubai. Kubai says, I think the discussion a bit later. Uh, I need information on the prices for pregnant uh, sows. I don't know if um, yeah, you have that at the moment. Mm, sorry, I, I didn't get that again. Okay, uh, they're asking about the current prices for uh, those that are pregnant. Okay, uh, currently we don't uh, supply uh, pregnant sows. Uh, we only supply the open sows and uh, the bores or the semen. Um, we used to supply pregnant sows and uh, they would move from uh, our station when uh, checks have been made that, uh, because after breeding, you need to confirm uh, after about 18 to 24 days, whether the pig is conceived and uh, would uh, keep the animal up to about uh, 50 days. But uh, the challenge that was occurring was like, if the pig gives birth to a small litter size, like uh, if you were expecting uh, maybe 12, then you get about three or four. The fault would be like it's pig industry board, but then you are also managing the pig at your place. And if you don't manage it well, then again, that can affect uh, the number of piglets which are born because there are stress factors and so on all come in. So uh, currently we are not uh, uh, supplying such. Uh, it's we just assist you in getting the open ones and then breeding is uh, done on your farm to avoid uh, a lot of stress factors and so on. All right, uh, thank you for taking that one. And uh, because of our time, I'll take uh, the last two questions. Uh, one saying, uh, do we have a threshold number for pigs we can start with for profitability uh, purposes? Uh, Mr. Gendesa, if you can take that one. Funds permitting, uh, you look at about 15 breeding females, and there you would need one bull, one male pig. But uh, it all again depends on your, your, your capital. We have uh, farmers starting with uh, five and then uh, they also increase. Uh, so it's uh, like uh, the capital you would need and at the same time, your efficiency of production because uh, it's not always like if someone has a high number of breeding females, then uh, the business will be booming. You might find that someone with a tensile unit might even be doing well 
compared to some with that double that number, that is 20 breeding females. So we keep emphasizing on the key factors, efficiency of production. All right, thank you. Then uh, this one is for Ishe uh, Onesu. It says, uh, thanks Ishe Onesu for the uh, great presentation. Uh, may we please have your contact number for further engagement? Okay, my contact number is 0776-083-193. I repeat, 0776-083-193. That's my call and WhatsApp number. All right, uh, thank you. you. Uh, and uh, someone is asking for me such in the source number, uh, Don John, if you can quickly shout out your contact details as well. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, my call and WhatsApp number is 0772 Zero double seven two nine triple three one four. All right, uh, thank you. We have uh, sent you from us uh, the uh, for Ishonesu and John Kirindo, and I'm sure you have also taken uh, Mrs. Tapendes's uh, contact that we said earlier on. This marks the end of our webinar, but before we end, we'll would just check if there are any parting shots from our presenters. Yeah. Uh, maybe just one uh, item. I think at the top of uh, all the risk management measures that I outlined in the presentation, I think uh, the issue of good uh, livestock husbandry uh, is, uh, is uh, of paramount importance. I think uh, from the uh, other speakers, uh, I think the emphasis has been on uh, proper timing of operations related to especially breeding, uh, feeding, uh, and uh, disease prevention and control. So I think uh, uh, farmers should be aware of all uh, aspects, all critical aspects related to these uh, three areas uh, so that they succeed in their peak uh, production uh, operation. Uh, thank you. Thanks, John. And uh, Mr. Tendesa. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh... To farmers, I would uh, like to thank you for listening. And um, it's uh, the industry is uh, growing and uh, it's exciting. Uh, our target, uh, like I think it's John who highlighted that, we are targeting in the NDS one uh, strategy. We are uh, uh, that goes up to 2025. We are targeting to produce uh, 22,000 tons of pork. Uh, from uh, the commercial producers. And uh, with the way things have been going, uh, I'm sure that will be possible. And uh, let's remind each other that uh, we live in a global village where competition uh, locally and uh, abroad is, uh, is, is real. And uh, we cannot uh, talk of exports if we are not competitive. And even locally, we need to be competitive to other meat products. We have beef, we have chicken, which will also be competing uh, as a protein source and even uh, non-livestock uh, products. So it's not a question of uh, one going to pick a kg of pork from the shelf if it's expensive. It needs to have a competitive price and efficiency is key. And uh, I'm happy also to inform farmers that um, uh, you are growing and uh, we have a group of uh, smallholder farmers from the two corridors I've already alluded to, um, assisted by ZAGP with Action Aid uh, uh, assisting or being the leaders. There is uh, importation of uh, new genetics that is to come in the country, I think in the next month or two, uh, whereby the smallholder farmers have injected their own profits back into the business. So it's like uh, appreciating that good genetics can also do the trick. So uh, farmers, uh, let's work in groups. Let's try to reduce transaction costs 
by working in groups uh, and uh, we will succeed by so doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kayendesa, for that one. Uh, Ishan Esu, uh, checking if you're now back online. Yes. Yeah, any parting shots? Sorry, Eddie? Any parting shots um, before oh, okay. we close? Okay, so I just wanted to say with the new developments happening in the, in the pig eye industry in Zimbabwe, uh, uh, mainly through the uh, ZAGP and the PIB, uh, new developments, new breeds coming in, it gives us hope and shows us that there is huge opportunity for growth in the pig industry. You, you as a farmer just have to make sure that you focus on efficiency. So efficiency will give you high number of piglets, high growth rate, uh, good market weights. So five it is your partners in profitable animal production. We are there for you. We are there to make sure that you achieve your goals. And always remember why you started Pigan. Thank you. All right, uh, perfect. Thanks so much. I would like to extend our gratitude to Ishe Unesu Nemera, uh, Mr. Kaendesa, and Mr. John Chirindo, as well as uh, Five Eight, Meneva Risk Advisors, and the industry uh, board for making this event a success. And we also want to thank you, farmers, for tuning in today. Until next time, uh, goodbye and happy pig production. Thank you. Have a great one.